but an extra turn of buffs from the Sojourner was way too much for us to overcome, unfortunately. We really needed more of our bounce spells against that deck, and we didn't hit them. It's possible it was incorrect to shuffle the Karma, but we kind of just took the random spells and prayed. It's also possible that playing the, um, the Karma for the random spells the previous turn was incorrect. But I would have had a hand space issue if I had waited till the next turn. Their deck was a smart idea, though. Hush is another thing that I think is really strong in the format and brings relevance to, to Targon, even though Targon had some pretty big nerfs that hurts it in some ways. I considered playing Targon just to play Hush again. Um, okay. I'm pretty sure this list is one of those more aggressive lists, so I definitely want to keep the Concussive Palm and uh, the Perfectionist. For the record, unless you're going up against a Control deck, I almost always mulligan the Time Trick. Yeah, it can help you um, find other things, but unless I already have an Eye of the Dragon in hand, uh, I just mulligan for my Eye of the Dragon and my Practical Perfectionist against aggro matchups because you really need to... Oh, and Cats, because you really need to have the early game blockers and Eye of the Dragon is kind of your make or break for um, for surviving against these decks. I'm not going to commit the Eye of the Dragon yet, though. This is a list that is known for being able to challenge, and I need to be able to um, better protect it before I commit it to the board. Um, also, if it's not generating dragons for me yet, uh, there's really not a reason to put it at risk. This is interesting. Perfectionist isn't bad, but something like Will is going to be really, really strong against their deck because they do a lot of um, challenges and um, barriers. I think I have to take the Will, especially because my other copy is already in hand. So uh, if I don't do it now, I'm risking um, drawing it and not having it as an option later. But this is, um, this is exactly what I was talking about. Having a lot of unique... Um, answers in your deck actually helps you to find the correct answers for things. Concussive Palm was also tempting, but I think I want the extra Eye of the Dragon, especially because um, there's a high likelihood that they're going to just kill my Eye of the Dragon. Okay, we're going to tempo play this will on um, Lulu because I want to get the dragon off of um, Eye of the Dragon for next turn. And we know they can't play Lulu again this turn. Yeah, look, we got a deny out of them. That's very worth it to us. Uh, it does cost us our dragon, but taking a deny is so good. Gentlemen, lady, the honor is okay. yours. We're going to go ahead and get our other Eye of the Dragon down. They're going to attack and use um, that, obviously. And we'll just bounce it or stun it. Uh, I haven't decided yet. Bouncing's pretty good. I think I, I think I might need to save the bounce, though. Hmm. I think just stunning it for now is fine. I think the, I think, uh, the recall is a higher value to us, because it will... Uh, also get rid of, you know, their Jarvins and things like that. I do dislike where our Spellman is currently sitting, though. It makes it a lot harder to get dragons going. But we'll go ahead and do this. We're actually going to do a fast spell, because we have OK Reload. We really want more reactive cards right now in our hand. And now we have another reactive card. And yeah, this is just another example of what I was talking about, like the deck kind of having a steeper learning curve, because some people would play it for the memes and just always draw their slows with this. But not only uh, am I not positioned well to win with a called shot, uh, but there's not even a chance for me to hit um, Parallel Convergence. 
So like I said before, when people pass, you take it. That is a lot of mana they aren't spending. And it's a deck that we know has answers to uh, to a lot of things like um, attacks uh, where they can just bounce your, your units. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just commit this gotcha to killing... Honestly, as much as I want to go for the Lulu, I think it might be more important to go for the Challenger. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go for the I'm gonna go for the Lulu. I'm gonna go for the Lulu because um, if this thing stays in play in levels, it's gonna give them consistent barriers and vulnerables, and that's really bad for us. I think it is possible they're gonna be able to protect this. I don't expect to keep both eyes of the, eyes of the dragons this round, but um, if I'm able to force them to do other things this turn, then we're okay with that. Yeah, that's okay. Um, it does mean they have to be more cautious about attacking right here. Huh, interesting. So they probably still have a barrier or something for their Lulu then. Okay. So the plan is we're going to block like this and do nothing, and we're going to see how they react, because uh, if we have to take these trades, we will. It sucks that they'll keep their challengers and we'll lose our eyes of the dragon. Uh, and honestly, I think the correct play would, to say, would be to accept this exactly as it happened. But now um, now we have an educated guess, right? Do we want to take this damage on the scatter pod? Do we want to save an eye of the dragon and prevent card advantage? We have options. And um, that is a more extensive card for them as well. I think we still keep the will and we stun instead. And we'll take the damage onto our scatter pot. Because on one mana, it's unlikely they're going to do much else. Okay, now that we got the two spells going though, these deep meditations are so much stronger for us. We go ahead and attack here. If they have a barrier, they might just block with one of these to generate more um, advantage in their hands. The Laurent Cavaliers are actually really strong. I had trouble fitting them because there's so many good four drops in Damasha right now. Like, I could honestly splash Damasha just for four drop units and then build a deck that's other stuff and four drop Damasha. Because I would play just the four the the challengers, the one that generates a challenger in, the, in your hand, the bird that makes copy of itself, and this, and then a package of something else around it, and I think it would be fine. <laughs> like that's how that's how good their four drops are right now. Uh because challengers actually pretty insane. Yeah, this card right here. This card and then the silver wing vanguard. Just all in the same package. That notably um is bad for us to balance and can buff their units. I'm not surprised they're playing a big challenger package, but it's annoying that they have uh, hit everything they need. Oh, that actually got created off a of cavalier. That's really rude. And one of the arguments for playing this card now is that it can generate this card, which will generate more cards. The amount of card advantage that you can just get is quite frankly disgusting. We're in a really awkward situation just because, um, we, we haven't really developed any threats yet. I don't even think we hit a cat yet this game. And uh, that's kind of our biggest win condition. And they have this giant board full of I'm going to challenge you and kill your stuff. We are... Uh, on curve for karma though, and I think keeping the deep meditation is pretty important for that. Uh, fuzzy caretaker is actually quite annoying. Let's see what we have here. Hmm. So, as much as I want to take a gotcha and like try to slam it down on a Lulu, I think it's really, really important that I get a crystal in my deck. Um, I don't. I don't see a way for me to win without doing something like this.
This one will at least die when it pulls a thing. They they probably should have pulled the Eye of the Dragon with the one with one health, and then a two health unit with the one with a two health, because they're going to get boosted by this. They can do that too, I suppose. I guess to be fair, that makes it to where if I bounce this, um, it's worse for me, because I give them more card advantage instead of less. Okay, we're gonna try to trade here, try to trade here, try to jump block here. This would be another case if we need to wait and see how they react before we play cards. Because we want them to give information before we give information. So now we have the upside of, uh, yeah, they're gonna generate more card advantages off that, but they can't play it this round anymore. They have so much gas, though. I will admit that's definitely a problem for us right now. Breathe in, breathe out. And they haven't even tried to play another unit yet, which is pretty bad for us. Okay, mm. unfortunately, we're really, really just locked on our, our cards. The Hexite Crystal's amazing for us, but we can't commit it yet. We need to... Um, We really need to try to play for a Karma win. It's just a matter of hitting Karma. Because right now hitting a Karma, we're positioned not bad. We have a lot of things that can protect her. But we have to draw her, and we have to draw her soon, because there's not much left for us to do. Um, as much as I would like to develop my board more, um, via spells, I need to play these spells very reactively. And if I don't generate tempo with these wills in the in the homecoming, then I just, I don't see a, a way out. I might actually play this Hexite Crystal just to not die here. Okay, This is probably the best Hexite Crystal I'm going to get. This will potentially field wipe them. So even if they have some protection, they don't have a lot. That's fantastic for us. Okay, this is awkward because I could bounce this. But I already have the second spell. And this gives some card advantage. So I don't think it's worth it. This is really, really important of a hit right now. It will hopefully help us fix. If we get a cat or a karma, we're going to take it. Um, oh, also if we get a, a, a whale, whatever they're called. Um, no, I'm apparently out of the... Oh, no, the, that's the card not found by. I am out of it, huh? Wait, am I? I didn't think I played two of them. Scattered pod. Since I played four of them, didn't I just predict or something? I, I think I still have some. I think the Jet Tracker's tripping. I'm pretty sure I played one Scatter Pod this game, which means I should have one left in my deck. Yeah, I played one Scatter Pod this game. Hmm. I might actually just take the Echo here. I need something that's just a threat. And as much as it hurts to shuffle more copies of it in my deck, um, the longer this game goes on, the less confident I am that I'm going to survive. I want to protect my eye for as long as possible, so we're going to go ahead and Homecoming instead of Will. And this also uh, doesn't bounce the wrong unit. <laughs> On the upside, if this deck is playing hard removal, it's almost definitely fight cards, and I have counters for that. You do this time? I actually have the mana to counter twice and still predict with Echo, which will get me the level. I 
I will admit that's a bit problematic. We're gonna do this, because it'll give me a predict before I attack. And yeah, I can... They can draw another Shen with it, but I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about Echo being able to do things this turn. Especially since we still have two wills and a couple counter spells in our hand. We're positioned okay to uh, to battle their double striking crap. I think they're considering fighting right here. Oh, interesting. Um, I think if they are willing to deny... Huh, it's, it's a weird situation, because I don't know that I can afford to deny. I'm going to. I think the tempo is worth it. I'm not predicting, unfortunately, but I think the tempo is actually important enough. And it also gives me my second spell trigger. Unfortunately, though, I don't get my, my level on my Echo yet, which means I don't get to cast this for free. Also, notice how long these games are going. It's another reason why I take a break from it and go to a different thing that climbs the ladder worse. It's both to take a break from this style of play and to just play different things and not get burned out. But it does result in me um, not climbing the ladder very quickly between this deck taking a long time, even with a high win rate, and then um, throwing the rankings away. Okay, this guy has a level. Is it too greedy to take another Will or another Echo? I think I'm actually going to take a Perfectionist. I think it's a, I think it's probably really important that I'm able to keep digging to fix my deck. At this point, I will have to um, to let them make whatever trade with this they're going to, because I think blocking the six damage is more important. Blocking the nine damage is more important. I'm sorry, I stand corrected. We're gonna play the called shot. Um, yeah, I'm giving up an echo, but. Especially now that I'm going to get Dragonling on my turn from it. It's probably worth it. And it's not gone, gone. It's just back in the deck. What is gained when you return malevolence? We're going to do this first because it might give me more copies of something like Chrono Break. Wow, that's fantastic, actually. The only thing that's awkward about it is I do have to give up being it on top of my deck in order to use Echo's free card, which I dislike. Okay, these two units will definitely attack. Uh, I think I just have to save these for blocking. We know that they can do something to develop double striking. And yeah, their life is low, but they have blockers if they need them. This is the case of not wanting to overcommit. Okay, this is actually a perfect hit for us. This should probably be game. There's a chance they have another um, deny, but they've already played two. Okay, I think we win now. That's gonna be very difficult for them to come back from this because they have to block here. This is the only unit they don't have to block or answer in some fashion. 
And then I'm going to get a free predict and draw and potentially just keep digging things that win me the game. What is gained when you return malevolence? Oh, and at this point, like, if they didn't deny that, they don't have a deny. So we can, we can play the rest of our turn however we want, and there's not much they can do about it. Yeah, we win. If they have a Nopify, we also have a Nopify, so that's not a concern either. And this is one of the rare occasions of Echo actually winning me the game. Uh, like I was saying in the deck tech, you can win from something like an Echo, but, uh, yeah. But it's not the primary win condition. But that was the perfect example of just not hitting Karmas. And so far, we're kind of just back and forthing on our wins. Eventually, we should hopefully pull ahead on that, and then it'll be closer to the represented uh, win percentage. Obviously, we were if we were to stop right now, then we are actually at exactly a 60%. But um, for now, we're going to just keep climbing the ladder with it, getting some more footage, kind of just showing different matchups and how, how things play out. Of note, this deck's worst matchup are the very aggressive decks like Pirate Aggro. And to a lesser extent, because um, because you have counters for Pike spells, Lurk can be a problem. Lurk played patiently and doing really explosive turns is probably a bigger problem for this deck than just like traditional Lurk. And then um, this deck can be a problem if they get the spell shield um, through levered, leveled silver or, um, or through... Uh, what you call it? The, the the completion of the Warlord's Horde too early. Go get this tiny dove. If they are slowed down enough that um, I'm able to level a Karma first, I'm normally fine though, because the spell shield only matters when I have a handful of spells instead of a lot of spells. I'm actually gonna nopify this. The only other thing in this deck I think that I can even nopify is a uh, grappling hook and denying them five damage from a silver level plus you know healing myself for five i think was definitely worth my counter see now we have a case of like call shots just a cantrip for us when i'm gonna play the second spell we'll just bank the spell man and move on with our lives that's annoying, but it's okay. Okay, we're at least hitting um actual units now. I'm gonna pre-commit the will because I do not want to take the extra damage from the, the living shadow. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to pass here. I'm just going to take this all. There's not a reason for me to commit the Eye of the Dragon, so I'm not planning on blocking with it. And, um, I could just bank the mana and then play it as, as my opening move instead. That's annoying. We do have a little bit of means of protecting it now, though. Okay, I think the Mystic Shot's pretty important here, actually. And then, uh, they can't get Zed down this turn, so we're gonna go ahead and commit this to the Merciless Hunter. Make sure we have enough spells for our Eye of the Dragon. Are they thinking about buffing this? They might be. They might legitimately be considering if they want to buff this to keep it alive. And honestly, since they telegraphed the buff that hard, uh, it may have been a super 
pro play to bluff me, but I think I'm going to have to pre-commit this concussive palm again. Especially because if I can get them to spend out more mana, then the Mystic Shot will actually stick. If it's made of sand, I can write. Okay. Steady now. I go, I go. Hmm. The question becomes, do I protect my eye of the dragon? I think I need to. I think my life is low enough I really need to. And buffing health is more awkward because they have to play... Oh, okay, they have... I didn't think about Twin Disciplines. But I was just saying, um, they had to play more than one buff for most of their buffs. And then immediately stood corrected by the Twin Disciplines. Hmm. Honestly, we're kind of in an interesting spot here. I think we have to commit the karma and hope they can't just remove it before they start their turn. Because then um, the random spell can be helpful. It's really unfortunate, but... Perfectionist might have found me a card to get me out of the hole. But... Not to the same degree, I think. This is absolute big yikes. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I think I'm dead. This was kind of just the perfect storm of them getting the stuff they needed to kill me. Slash me not getting the correct answers for their deck. Sivir's not leveled yet. But my life is very low. Karma's definitely dead, though. She's probably getting pulled in front of... Oh, Okay. If they want to give me a beneficial trade, I'm going to take the beneficial trade, you know? Yeah, unfortunately I have to take this. I have to take the damage I'm taking here, but... Oh, I'm exact dead. I should have played deep med. I didn't even realize. Whoops. Then that's why you check the I before you click OK. That was a misplay on my part. Um, I was probably still dead, but I could have tried to dig for a thing to survive. And I had a few things that I could have hit. I could have hit a removal spell. I could have hit a twin disciplines to buff the health of my karma, which I guess arguably I should have been digging for anyway. That was a perfect example of that deck being a harder matchup for us too, though. They get those units with um, the spell shield. It's hard for us to answer them, but also we just didn't hit a lot of our um, card advantage cards. Or early blockers. And this deck really suffers against those aggressive decks if they can't hit enough early blockers. And that specific deck is one of the hardest to keep an eye of the dragon in play for because they have so many ways of giving you vulnerable. Okay, this is probably a more late game deck. I'm going to be a little bit greedy and actually keep the karma in hand because I think even if they're ramping, their decks would be a little bit more late game. And if they commit to ramping, um, if they commit too much mana ramping, I might just develop a, a threat. There are there are matchups and times where you just get karma and play to get the extra cards in hand. You normally won't, obviously, but um, there are circumstances where it's different. Also, because their deck seems to be going so slow, um, where does it do a bunch of face hits? There's a good chance they're playing Avalanche with this deck, so I don't I didn't want to commit this before I attacked. Okay. They at least uh can't avalanche this turn anymore. Okay. They are playing big honking units, so I think an extra con uh, set of conclusive palms is okay. Okay, this is really, really good for us because it means we're actually able to uh, develop our board if we want. I'm going to time trick, though, because if I hit removal, which I didn't, uh, I'm going to take deny. All of their good answers against karma are going to be in Shadow Isles.
We'll start with Echo first. Alright, that's an avalanche. I think I'm actually gonna deny that. That's a that's a big tempo swing to deny it. Woo! It's possible they didn't have a very good hand to answer my board. It's also possible they only run the avalanches like a one or two of and didn't think they'd hit another copy. But that was still a fast surrender for sure. Uh, I think they could have played that out longer unless their deck is very weak to what was just happening and I took their only solution. It's funny though, because we're just doing that laddering. We're just going back and forth, not really uh, climbing. This is also awkward for Eye of the Dragon and such. Um, notably, the, the LeBlanc version of the deck is very susceptible to burn spells. In fact, even though it feels a little bit bad to keep a gotcha in hand and not get the discount on it, I think it's a strong enough card against their deck to keep it. And if I weren't talking to stream slash YouTube... Um, I wouldn't have thought of that, so it paid to think about it. I don't want to give them the, the extra reputation stack. They're almost certainly um, actually playing things that care about reputation. And anytime you play the LeBlanc version, reputation matters. So yeah, the trade's fine as long as it doesn't count as a five attack unit when they're doing the trade. Another Mystic Shot was such a good hit for us. That's fine. Anytime they want to pass, we'll take it. Great. This is another case of Echo doing what Echo does. We would much rather have... Echo become vulnerable than Eye of the Dragon against this deck. Eye of the Dragon will keep us in the game. Echo might accomplish something, but Echo might also do nothing. Um, man, it feels so bad to take the other god. I actually, I'm gonna take a Karma. It lets me commit a Karma to the board just to try to get card advantage and know that I still have another one available to me. The great thing here too is I can still just protect the Echo and make them feel very annoyed with life. We're going to pre-commit the Mystic Shot. I think. No, we're not. No, we're not. I'd rather... Um, I'd rather have them waste the attack, I think. Okay. Now we're going to pre-commit the Mystic Shot. Hmm. Okay. If they're gonna give me a chance to protect Echo, I'm just gonna do it. Yeah, it hurts to take that much damage, but they um They gave me a lot of They gave me a lot of tempo advantage by playing that the way they had. <laughs> Obviously, this is a very annoying card for us because of the spell shield. The deep meditation is pretty important. So is the fallen feline. I think I actually take the fallen feline here. I want a little bit more development on my board anyways. And then we're going to throw a karma down. It's going to both discourage them opening attacking because they're going to want to um, give her vulnerable. And... Um, Give me an extra card. This place reeks of rotten death. Smells like adventure and muddy, you mean? We need to pop the spell shield and sever ASAP so we can kill her. Wealth is merely a foolish distraction. 
Of course, so punished. I'm just a mana short of actually getting it all done, too. It's so bad for us. They played. The, they ended up fixing their positioning and playing that a lot better than they did initially. Because now the Sivir's going to level and these are going to be able to trade. And beforehand, this wasn't going to get them a good trade. You cannot win. Yeah, if I can't... If I can't um, at least trade, I'm not giving up the Karma. We're in such a bad position here. If they have a rally, I don't know that we can get back from this. Hmm. I'm going to just pre-commit this. It's time. Observe the yep. I'm going to scatter pot. I really need the extra block. Um, I need more reload, I think. Because I, I have a little bit in the term of answers. I don't have a lot of answers, but the problem is, is that if I can't reload, then something like my Eye of the Dragon is not going to do anything. At least they were short on reputation, so they had to play that for expensive. But I'm not confident at all right now. If Karma were at least leveled, then I would be able to feel a little bit better about my situation. Danger pays. Okay. Um. We know this is going here. Two, four, six, seven. Two, four. Six. So seven mana. If I play this, I can hit burn spells in my deck. I'm out of Mystic Shots already. Twin Discipline would give me three more life. Um, and that's it. So I think I have to actually use the Karma Insight and Gamble on RNG helping me. And it doesn't. Actually. Does this change anything? Get me against I don't take that damage and I'm still dead, right? Yeah, they got there. Like I said, that deck, it's a harder matchup because uh, if they get their spell shield units before I have board developed, and the fact they play so many things that give vulnerable just really, really hurts my deck. Um, and like I said, there there are ways to change this deck to make it perform better against those. You you do some some more multi-target type effects like um, da -ba -da, where are you? Like time winder and or um, static shock. You also can just play cheaper things that will target. Um, in order to pop spell shields. It's just, the deck wasn't seeing very much play, and now all of a sudden it is, at least to right now, on the queue. And I'm, I'm still maintaining like a 50-50 win rate, so it's not awful, but we want to be above that 50% so that we're actually climbing on the ladder. Really need to get like two back-to-back -back wins before we keep doing our, our win-loss pattern, or we're just not going to climb at all. Okay, cool. It's at least a different list. Do I expect them to be super aggressive? I don't. I don't actually. I think I'll keep the Eye of the Dragon just to be safe. 
but I'm also going to keep the karma and the... Actually, you know what? I'll keep the echo and the time trick. I'll, I'll toss the karma back because... Uh, oh, and then I get her anyways. I'm still convinced there's a glitch with their mulligan system because the 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 frequency in which I draw a copy of something I mulligan away when I mulligan exactly one is so high it has to be a coding bug. It can't be anything else. It's At this point, it's basically statistically impossible for the amount of times it's happened to me for that to be anything but a... A massive glitch. Uh, we'll go ahead and develop out the eye. We are on the attack, and we still have mana to play a thing. I don't expect to play a spell here, but I didn't feel bad developing it. Another karma. Okay. Definitely going to play the Perfectionist. Now, it wasn't positive, and then they played something bigger. Uh, do we want more Called Shots? I think more Called Shots are actually fine. Their deck is probably on the slower end. Homecoming is also hypothetically fine, because it's going to help slow down. Um, they're, probably in, they're probably in Kahiri, and slowing down Kahiri and or their buffed unit can be pretty strong for us. Uh, I'm going to hit the Called Shot, actually. It might be too greedy, but um, I'm... Playing with the educated guess that this list is a slower list, and if I'm correct, then um, call shots gonna be really, really good for us. I'm not gonna risk echo to the board yet. Actually, um, they, there's a good chance they have removal, and um, oh, there's another one, and I I have an okay amount of predict from opening hand slash draw that discouraged me from just slamming him down. Since I hit another one, I'm gonna play him even though I can't afford his spell this turn though. Okay. We'll just swing here. We don't wanna trade this with the two, three. Okay, so they didn't have removal removal, but they have quicksand, which is just as good. Because they just got to trade with it for free. I'm not gonna lie, I always forget Quicksand's even a card, and then it gets played against me, and I go, oh yeah, sometimes people play Quicksand, that's lame. Hmm. I don't need the, the discounted gotcha, I'm gonna get the Karma down. They can't kill her on two mana. By the way, another thing I like about Echo is that, let's say you uh, bank your mana on three, you can curve Echo into Karma with spell mana and make it really awkward for them to try to answer a threat. Back in the game. Because I know that they're quite playing quicksand, um, I will not be attacking with Echo here unless they tap out of quicksand range. I'm just going to play this called shot. Splitting the timelines. I want to at least be able to afford a trick to protect the Echo if I'm going to attack into a quicksand at this point. The unfortunate thing about creating this tri-beam is I don't think we have very many three-cost cards in this deck. We don't. It's just the Practical Perfectionists. Okay, so they're still able to kill it. Okay, we hit a deny, which is great. Okay. So what I'm going to do here... By force of will. Actually, I don't think it's worth throwing a karma in front of it. Oh, this is so awkward. Oh, put me down to seven. Okay. If they're able to protect it, I can still respond with another thing. And I want to cast one more spell this turn for my dragons anyway, because I really need to heal. Heal. 
I did consider just playing the gotcha on this in the first place. There's no way they can protect out of range of both of these. I regret not playing the gotcha on it first, even though it would have uh, cost more mana. I, I should have played around the extra health. Oh, they actually had a way of protecting it from both. It, <laughs> And they just denied me my spells. That's so fucking bad. That's a big yikes for us. We really, really need to um, get the dragons this turn. So that makes our decision for us. This parallel convergence is pretty good. So is Mystic Shot. Man, this is actually a hard choice because we don't have very many good cards in hand. I, I think I'm gonna take the parallel convergence because it can just win me the game. We're going to pass for now and see what they do. Because we, we might end up needing to deny something anyway. Okay, they're forcing me to play another card. We're going to play this to get the spell. And just have deny mana. We don't want to overcommit. Two, four, six, eight. Breathe in, breathe out. If that's all they're doing, we're okay. Okay, I'm actually going to commit this Parallel Convergence before I level the Karma, because I really want to heal. They're in P and Z, and they're playing pretty aggressively now. I want to make sure that I can heal off of these freaking Dragonlings. And that was just an incredible amount of damage that we just could put down. I'm thinking if we want to risk losing deny mana here. Okay, I'm gonna take the chance on it because I don't actually need this to double cast. And I'll take a fast spell. Cool. I should have actually played this in a response. I didn't, I, I didn't check its level. I want to make sure this isn't in play when it levels. They're probably going to level it right now in response, though. Nope. We took a counter. That's pretty important for us. Okay. I know how I'm going to try to win the game, and... I'm pretty sure something like quicksand is anything that can save them, because I can just rising spell for force and flurries and flurry of fists on this pod and win the game. The answer lies within. What is gained when you return malevolence? Also, um, they're going to want to silence this even if um, I don't play this trick, which is why I'm waiting to see what they do. You never learn. For now, I'm just going to commit this because this still wins me the game. There's no reason to commit the extra mana on the flurry. We got there! Woo! The fun thing about the amount of matches we've done, though, is you're kind of seeing all the different win conditions do their thing. Um, I think, I think the 
the hexite crystal is actually the the thing that has performed the least, which is weird because when I was playtesting it, I often won from the hexite crystal more than anything else. But today, just the matchups we're getting and the draws we're getting, it's working out that way. It'd be really nice to start actually moving up the ladder, though. You've just seen me go 20-0, 20-0 uh, back and forth. I would love for um, for you to be able to see the deck actually climb a little bit. It doesn't have to climb an insane amount, but 60% should go up a bit. And um, we're just not hitting the 60% quite hard enough yet. This is the more aggressive version because it's Callista. So I think we keep the Mystic Shot. Awkwardly enough, sometimes we mulligan the Mystic Shot because we want to have better chances of hitting extra copies. But um, we're going to keep it this time. And we kept the Echo because just using him as a, um, a traitor is also okay with us. I could have arguably Mulligan for more cheap cards, but because my ratio is low enough, I didn't. Got it. it was probably incorrect to not just aggressively go for the Eye of the Dragon and toss the whole hand against this list. But we'll see how it goes. We'll play it out. Not that we have a choice at this point. We already kept the hand, but... The Kalista version of the list usually plays Sharks because they level the Viego and the Kalista both really quickly. We're definitely going to take more Fallen Felines. That is an incredible hit for us, especially against this version of the deck. As crazy as this is, I'm going to take this block. This deck has a lot of ways of sacrificing this and actually gaining value. And by taking the block, I'm actually preventing them from getting that value. So it may not be correct, but um, it's a play I actually like to make when I can value trade with it. You hurt the tempo of the deck a lot more than um, it seems like you do when you do things like that. Okay, um, Homecoming is almost certainly our keep here. Concussive Palm could also be very good for us. Obviously, it would give us extra blockers and stuns. The reason I think I would rather take the Homecoming is both because I have a cat and because I can deny the levels of both of their champions with bouncing. And at least with Callista, a lot of people have to uh, will commit to a board of, um, of ephemerals and or bad attacks to make the level happen. And then we just deny it with the homecoming and it feels really good. See, they had, they had that. And if I hadn't blocked their one one, they would have been able to just sacrifice it for tempo. Fly from the first lands. Okay, we're going to pre-commit to this because we really don't want this Callista level. It's super important that it does not level. And we have one deny if they sacrifice in response. They didn't, which is great for us. And obviously, pre-committing is not ideal, but um, also, I'm predicting before I play this cat, specifically because I was hoping to hit, um, get it, or not get, gotcha, because if I hit gotcha, I could actually kill the Callista right now. Get the Eye of the Dragon in play, because they're clearly having an aggressive round against us. And then because they're trying to level Callista, we're only going to block one. That's pretty annoying for us, but... Could be worse. Was that a Callista Sphere or a Normal Sphere? I wasn't paying attention. Okay, that was a Normal Sphere. Another Homecoming is actually really good for us. Okay, so once again, since they uh, since they're on two, we're just gonna pre-commit, and they might be able to sacrifice in response. But if they do, they they start to play the Callista. Me, 
for a brief moment, I considered playing the Mystic Shot now instead of the Cat. Just to take the death away from Callista. It's a little surprising they didn't, um... They didn't say the Butcher for Callista coming back down, but okay. Okay, I think we're gonna get the Echo down for now. Yeah, it makes Callista not a good attack. Uh, I'll, I'll take six and force them to have a sacrifice card. And if it happens to be something that generates card advantage, we can actually just respond to it with the mystic shot. Okay, unfortunately can't respond to that. They got the level up. They had all the gas in the world. We can still get there, but um, it's not looking great. And a lot of that is just, they, they hit all of their gas and it happens sometimes. They just, they get the cards they need to get. We can actually get a level on Echo here, which is really good. Mm -hmm. I think I need the Eye of the Dragon pretty badly here. Man, I really want the Fallen Feline, but I, I think I need answers more than Fallen Feline right now. Oh, wow, that's disgusting. I think I'm going to commit to killing this now for mana efficiency. So this has to go here. Your lesson begins. As much as I don't want to recall a thing that cost zero, that might be my better recall option. I could also just recall the Callista. The problem is, is that I would still need to block this if I did that. As dangerous as it is to go down to four, I'm just going to do it. They only have one card in hand. I think this is actually probably a pretty important deny to play. It's stopping them from drawing two and from um, denying me two health. Draw two, burn your opponent for two seems like a pretty strong effect. Ooh, okay. Um, I almost click skip, but I think a feline's probably good enough. Okay. I think it's too greedy to commit the karma to the board right here. I am going to draw burst for reload because karma is going to make this very strong. Okay, so this is like the dream draw. <laughs> Peace begins within. 
parallel convergence. If they can't just remove karma right now, this parallel convergence is going to win me the game. Especially because I may get two more um, crystals in the deck. I'm going to get back um, two of my mana, and I'm going to get two more karma, which is going to make these amazing. Because like, they have to block here, and then once they block, I'm going to be able to respond with my things to dig through my deck while I have a bunch of karmas. It's why this strategy right here is fantastic. I could even just play Deep Meditation to dig through my deck, because that would get me like a million spells at this point. It would get me two, four, six spells. Yeah, I'm just going to play Deep Med. Oh no, it's going to give me eight spells. My hand's actually going to be full. Yeah, there was like no way I wasn't hitting Crystal. The fact that we hit Chrono Breaks times three is also absolutely disgusting. Uh, also worth noting is all the karmas that they just blocked are now uh, going to still be in play to attack because they don't deal damage. And there we go. That is actually what the deck is built to do when it's not winning with its secondary win conditions. And obviously you can't always go off that way. And that's why we have those secondary conditions and where we have a more consistent rate than a meme deck. But we finally, uh, we broke we broke the pattern. We're up to six and four right now, which is actually a 10 match, 60% win rate. Which is probably already, you know, a large enough sample size to say, yes, look, this deck is relevant. We already have... Um, two hours of footage with the deck, which means I'm almost definitely going to want to break it into part one and part two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click stop on my stream to make it easier for me to edit this. And then I'm going to click start again and do the rest of my stream. And I think we're going to go ahead and actually um, get into some expeditions for the rest of it. So I'm going to click stop and restart. See you again in like two seconds.